Now, uh, one second. There. Now, the most important part in this screen here are the four connections, okay? Uh, the first one here is a nine pin green cable. This one is used for newer models from 2016 onwards. And um, it's mainly for commercial vehicles, of course. The nine six pin cables are for older uh, models from 2016 and before. Um, OBD2 for Volvo and Mac, and then OBD2 as well for light and medium duty, okay? Let's see, we, we have a truck that's from 2014, uses a black connector here. We can use the green cable or the black cable, doesn't really matter, and we click on connect. The options we have here is just run a system scan, in which case we will only see the different uh, systems in the truck, or run a system scan plus read fault, okay? If we click on this, in a minute, a minute and a half, we should be able to have um, a clear picture of, of exactly what's wrong with the truck, okay? We should be able to see exactly which systems there are on the truck present and which fault codes are in every system. Again, um, the first step, of course, is reading which systems there are, and then it's going system by system, reading the fault codes. The options you see here on the left, the plus signs basically is so we can provide a better picture of exactly what's wrong. So not only do we know how many fault codes are active on, a, on a, any given system, but we can tell you on this page exactly uh, which error codes there are, okay? We can just expand all faults and you will see all the problem, let's say all the errors or faults active on that track, or we can just collapse them one moment. There we go. And just expand the specific system we want to check. In this case, we have the, the Cummins engine. Okay, and then we have this information here. We have the status of the, of the fault code. In this case, it's an active fault code. We have the fault code, so the, the code number, which is what the OEM gives us, and the, how many times it's happened, okay? And then we have a brief description of what the fault code means. In this case, the particular feature inlet pressure, body data, but above normal operational range. This is what the OEM would normally give you, okay? With Jaltes, you know we've gone several steps here. On. So first button here on the right is the freeze frame data, which is gonna be um, a context or exactly what was going on with the truck when it happened, okay? So basically it's gonna tell you when it happened and the priority. In some cases, it will tell you the mileage or the how many miles the truck ran before having this issue. So this is all the information that the system provides, okay? We also give you the help and component of the faults, okay? In this case, we know that this fault code is related to this component here, the differential pressure sensor, DPF sensor. And then we can give you some information about the, uh, about the sensor. We will give you how it looks like, so some brief description, how it looks like, where to look for it, so the location, as well as some values, uh, the pinout of the, of, the, of the component, as well as some operational values, such as pressure, voltage, temperature, depending on the component, we'll have different information, okay? Now, we also provide the option of just by, without going anywhere else, just by clicking here, we have the component replacement guide, if you have to replace it, or the live data, okay? Let's say you want to check the, the data related to that component, you can just click on the button on the hyperlink below, and it will take you directly to that data without having to look for anywhere else in the software. Okay, since we are in demo mode, you see this is changing, but it should remain static if, the, um, if we are connected to a real truck. We click on the check mark and we go to the exact same spot we were before. We also provide the wiring diagrams. It's something that we develop ourselves. And the wiring diagrams will have always the same, the same structure, okay? You will see the, the system ECM, in this case it's the engine ECM, in the middle. And then the rest of the components connected to the ECM you will see on the sides, okay? In this case, the ECM is in the middle, as I said, and the components are on the side. The component we are working on, in this case the differential pressure sensor, is gonna be highlighted, okay? If you hover the mouse over the component, you will see the picture. If you double click on it, 
you will see the exact same information as before, okay? So you don't have to go back to the diagnosis menu to check for the information. You will always have it one click away. And again, if you want to check any other component, if you double click on the ECM, for example, you will be able to, to check. You see here the pin out, so you know if the pin 58 and 55 are connected to this component here. Just by clicking here, you can count 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, so this one here, and 58, this one here. Okay, so pretty, pretty simple, uh, but pretty pretty useful. As again, again, the ECM, how it looks like, where to find it, and the information, in this case, tied into it, okay? Now, if we go back to the diagnosis menu, we go back to the exact same spot, okay? Now, for those of you who have the, the info line license active, we also offer the, the full code troubleshooting, okay? It's a pretty useful uh, troubleshooting guide. It's basically a step-by-step -step guide on how to fix this particular um, extra, um, fault code, okay? In this case, first step, check if there are any fault register. Second step, check the differential pressure sensor. Again, we'll have the same information as before. Uh, with the diagnosis tool, check the measurements. We can provide the measurements if you would click here. And again, it's a simple step-by-step -step process on how to do it. Um, again, if there are some uh, other symptoms, let's say what we call um, the troubleshooting by symptoms, if they, imagine there's no active fault code, but there's a, a black smoke coming out of the engine. You can always click on the fault code, uh, troubleshooting by its mm, symptom, and we will uh, direct you to a different fault code troubleshooting for that symptom specifically, okay? In this case, it's a more general one because it's a symptom, not, not a fault code. So it's basically a general um, description on what to do. If we go back, we should remain on the same spot, okay? Imagine that you have to, let's say, perform a region or a particular filter reset. You can also do it through the troubleshooting guide. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just by clicking on the hyperlink, we will direct you to the specific uh, action. In this case, you see here, it's asking us for the expert mode. Since I have already entered before, um, I don't need to do it again. But again, you know, guys, the expert mode, um, if you don't have it, you will have very limited, limited um, um, capabilities on how to change parameters, perform calibrations, or uh, maintenance options, okay? Since any action that, that is going to change information on the ECM is going to rewrite information on the ECM will require the expert mode, okay? Again, all our procedures have three different steps. First step is gonna be general information about where we're about to do. In this case, you see here, we are perform the region. It's gonna take between 40 minutes and four hours the temperature we're gonna, write, um, we're gonna reach, and some additional information, okay? As well as some pictures. If we click on the check mark, we will go to the second step. The second step is gonna be the initial conditions that must be met in order to perform the region, okay? We have here the, um, we have the check mark here, and we have here the description. It's always good to read this, it's always necessary, because sometimes, even though everything is with a check mark, if we have, for example, one of these codes present on the, on the diagnosis, we will not be able to continue with the, we will get an error message, and then we'll, we can get frustrated, okay? So it's pretty good to read everything before continuing, and then we click on the check mark, and basically it's carrying out the procedure, okay? Once it's done, you will see the test has automatically completed, And you should be good to go. Okay. And finally, always, if we have to replace a component, you can. We, I'll show you now the replacement component. The replacement component guide. Um, and but our last step is always going to be clear fault codes. Okay. So if we follow all these steps and everything is working correctly, you should be able to clear all fault codes without a problem. Okay. This is basically what you get on the diagnosis. If you will see that the exact same thing repeats on every system. Okay, so if you want to um, check any other any other uh, fault code, you will see the exact same thing, pretty consistent. Now, if you um, other options we have here on the left side on the on the menu here is the system technical data. So it's going to be 
all the extra information that you might need to know exactly what's going on with the component. Okay, let me just. So, select the engine. I will show you exactly the diagnosis menu from before. Give me one second. So again, it's pretty simple. You click on the on the right connector. The system will automatically pick up everything that's on the truck. So it will detect every system. And then it will read um, system by system. It will read all the focus, OK? Again, it takes about a minute, minute and a half, depending on the on how many focus and the systems present on the truck. And after that, you will be able to, without even connecting to the specific system, diagnose it and perform any actions you want, OK? Now, if you want to know more about the specific system, in this case, let's say we want to connect to the engine. We have the menu here on the left. As I said, we want to connect to the engine. We have the system technical data, which is going to be, as I said, all the extra information you might need to make sure um, everything uh, about the system. Okay, In this case, for the engine, we have the cooling system. So if you want to know the temperature or the pressures, you have you, instead of having to go directly to the to the engine, you can just check them here. Okay, you have to check the fuel system. You know the operational pressure, the intake exhaust pressure. Okay, and last but not least is the components. Okay, this is the component list that you can access them from the diagrams as well. I will show you now how. But again, if you want to connect to a sensor, uh, instead of having to go through the specific through the through the list itself, you can just click on. So, on here, typing the words of this search engine will really help you. And sorry, will be able to help you exactly uh, figure out exactly what you're looking for. If you want to type oil, you will see how many uh, oil pressure sensor. Okay. Now, on the diagrams, you will see the exact same thing we saw before. Okay. In this case, we want to select the specific engine we are using, the first one. You will see the diagram, which is going to be the the. the as I said before, but um, something I didn't show you before is show component list, okay? Again, you will see the exact same component list, the exact same engine, and then you will see how, just by selecting it, you can see it on the diagram, okay? Now, vehicle service data, it's pretty useful when you have to um, service, uh, let's say, a fleet uh, of trucks. Um, you can keep track of exactly what you have to do. If it, after 25,000 miles, 50,000 miles, 125,000 miles, you will see it's basically a step-by-step -step, um, procedure uh, of what you should do um, for every one of the systems, okay? In this case, you have the cooling system, the fuel system, and the lubrication system. For on, on some occasions, you will see the information here, which is going to be... Um, let's say, uh, additional information on how to perform the service on the specific system, okay? okay on the, all this information we've got from the from technicians, from our own engineers developing it, as well as some information from the, from, from the OEM. So we get um, the most complete options. You will see here the most complete information on the market right now. And then, again, of, for those of you who have the info online, you see here every icon that has the internet icon here, um, you will have all these options available as well, okay? Vehicle technical data. For the vehicle technical data, you will see uh, some things as uh, belt uh, distribution, uh, the wheels on the engine exactly, so engine specifications here. Engine distribution, so you know the small wheels here, um, the belts distribution, the yes, treatment system. So you will get all the extra information uh, to make it easy, easier for you to, to diagnose and, and, and work on any kind of track, okay? The troubleshooting by symptoms is what I showed you before. So again, if you have any, any symptom on the track, but there's no, there's no fault code active, so you know there's something wrong, but do not know exactly why or how, let's say you have vitreous in the crankcase or you have black smoke. Again, 
uh, if at any point you can search on the on the engine on the um, on the search engine, and you will be able to access the specific troubleshooting guide for that uh, symptom. Okay. Resistance and procedures basically some procedures that we get as well from the OEM. We get our our own database. Um, in which case we are able to, uh, if we want to calibrate the accelerator pedal, we will need the expert mode, and then we can access the procedure. Okay. So again, a, a lot of information contained just one click away. And finally, on the left side here, we have the component replacement guide. Okay. This is something we will add on the 19.2 version. Okay. So you guys might not have it yet, but uh, the option is uh, available on, uh, under 19.2. Uh, so. You will see in here, for example, if you want to change uh, the NOx sensor after the catalyzer, you will be able to see the step-by-step -step guide here on how to do it. Okay, from safety information to how to uh, perform some some of the steps, how it should look like, the pinout, and everything. Okay, so again, all the information you might need to work on a truck, uh, you will have it through here. Now, if you go back to the diagnosis menu, you will see here on the right side. Now we haven't even connected to the to the to the engine yet. Okay, basically we are just this is the basic the first step of the diagnosis, which is the full truck diagnosis, and we haven't even gotten to the to the engine yet. But before that, I want to check here. We have here the fault codes. Okay, frequent test. Sorry about that. You might be able to do uh, on the engine from calibration of the variable of the VGT. Checking the output depth measuring. Okay, controlling program. So there are other options here that you might be able to you might be able to see. And the operation data basically is the, the the data from the from the engine, for example. Or the subcast treatment. There you go. So this is all the all the data you might be able to total uh, total um, trip data or just partial trip data. So you know exactly how your trucks are behaving and how your drivers are are are, are using the trucks. Okay. Under maintenance resets, we have the options here. With VIN information, you will see information about this specific truck. In this case, we know we are Flightliner Cascadia. Basic life data, again, this is going to be the most important life data we can offer from the truck, okay? But if, I'll show you right now how to access the full life data. So in this case, we have um, the odometer, battery voltage, engine operation hours. And you see here there are several different options here. So again, if you want to check the basic life data, so you know the coolant liquid temperature, you can always go through here without having to connect specifically to the engine. But if you want to check all the data from the truck, you can connect to the engine, and I'll show you how to do it right now, okay? The, the report preview, basically, you can do it through here or through here on the top. And you will see exactly what we've done up to now, up to this moment, okay? We have diagnosis systems, so we know which systems are present on the truck. Again, you can get this in two minutes. You will have this full report with every fault code active, okay? So you know, and you know, you can, um, the clients will be happy to see that um, you can show them exactly what's wrong. And for you, it's a, um, a revenue stream since, um, you know, these, these reports can go for a lot. Um, and in this case, you see how easy it is to get one of these reports, okay? And then you have the, the telematic option and save results to a vehicle. Okay, I'll show you later where you can where you can add all these options to the vehicle. But again, if we go to the overview, now there is the, this overview. Um, we select, we see what we can do without even connecting to, to one of the systems, but we are able to connect to the systems and have a lot more options, okay? In this case, if we are connecting to the engine, just by clicking on connect, we will see exactly uh, what we can do specifically to this engine, okay? The menu that appears here, it's gonna be the exact same thing on every system. So some systems will offer more options, some systems will offer less options, but at least the layout, you will see that it's the exact same thing. The first option is always going to be read focus, which is the exact same page as we've seen before. 
clear for codes if you want to clear them. System data is the data from the ECM, okay? This is pretty useful for us engineers and for you guys uh, to know exactly the ECU software version, uh, the visual manufacturer, all that information, okay? Under parameters, you will see the different options we have, okay? For example, for, for Cummins, for the 19.2 version, we'll have the option of copying and pasting the, 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 the ECU data, okay? But again, we have more, information, more, more options such as maximum vehicle speed, uh, cruise control, PTO, the idle. So all these options will be, will be available uh, under parameters. For example, if you want to change the maximum vehicle speed, again, it's going to be a three-step a three step program, so a three-step process. So the first option is going to be the information. Second step is going to be the, in this case, the, 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 the how the system it is is available right now, and uh, some information about what we're about to do. And last option is going to basically write, type in the, the speed. If you just follow these three steps, automatically the system will, will change it and the truck should have the new speed available, okay? Again, as I said, the first parameter we've seen, for example, this one is gonna be an improvement for the 19.2 version, okay? But the rest is going to, are already available. Under monitoring, you will see the live data and the system display and the specific system live data. For me, the most uh, important part, or at least the most visual one, is the system display. Okay, you will, for example, if you see the system display for the fuel system, you will see how it looks like. So you will see the flowchart of how every system is connected to the other and some additional information such as voltage, um, pressure, um, or temperature. Okay. If you follow the, um, to the exhaust gas treatment system, you will see more options here. But again, if you want to just check the live data, just by clicking on, on live data here. And again, depending on the on every engine, we'll have more options or, or less options. I believe for this engine in particular, we have up to 5,000 different values that we can check, so it will take some time to, to get them all. Um, on some other engines, we might have maybe 15, depending on what the engine offers and what we can we, we can get from the engine, okay? You will see the values here on the top right corner. You will see exactly how many we have and how many we've selected in the event if we select any, okay? You see here right now we haven't selected any and we have uh, 5,140 values, okay? Imagine that you only want to check pressure, okay? Instead of having to go through the full list, you can just check pressure, and you will be able to select uh, some of them. If you want to check only the oil pressure, you can select a specific, um, a specific uh, values for the engine pressure, okay? For the oil pressure. Now, there are several options of uh, visualizing the, um, the data. In this case, we have just the values, okay? We have the options of graphing them, so you know exactly how they vary. If, if they are moving around, you will know exactly how they vary. You can stop it. You can uh, re rewind it, fast forward, or and these will all be stored in the in the report. Okay, or you can just uh, see them as the the wheels with the needle. Okay. And again, you can always add the option here, which is a customized help, okay? If at any point on this truck you know you want to check or you know that some truck, some truck has a problem with the oil pressure sensor, um, just click here, check oil pressure sensor. And whenever you open on this kind of engine, the, um, whenever, whenever you, you check, the specific systems here, you will see the option of, of uh, getting your, your customized help, okay? Now, if we go back here, we have the option of activating components. Basically, that means activating and deactivating to know that they work, okay? In this case, we have the fan activation, for example, or the solenoid valve. And the system checks, they are the most common tests or checks we have for these, or not, all, most, no, not the most common, my mistake, by, but the full 
set of tests we can do for this agent, okay? We have the cylinder cutout, the cylinder performance, VGT actuator, uh, the add blue death pump, the control, all that, okay? Under maintenance, um, we have the region, uh, for example, or the replacement, okay? Those are the most important, at least for what I've seen with the with the with you guys with the technicians, uh, the region and the replacement are uh, something that everyone's looking for in, in in a diagnosis tool. We have them, okay, for commercial trucks. In let's say 99.9 of the cases, we have the option of performing the region, and uh, in some cases, in some cases, the re replacement or the reset, depending on what the what the truck allows us to do. But again, you will always see those options here under maintenance. Under calibration, you will see the option of changing the injector, so the injector coding, as well as the VGT calibration. Okay, and under configuration, you will see the option of password management. Okay, what does this mean? This means that if at any point you want to, uh, uh, one of the systems is, is password protected, either client uh, password or, um, or dealer password, if it's client password protected, what you can do is with this, if you already know the password, this is pretty important. If you already know the password, you can change it or you can uh, erase it. But you will not be able to do anything if you don't know the password, okay? We cannot, we are not a hacking tool, let's say. What we can do is change it or erase it once we know the original password. So that, that's pretty important to know because sometimes you think without with this, we will be able to access any system even though we don't know the, the password. That's not the case. Now, under operational data, operation data, you will be able to see um, the data record, even if it's partial or total data, which is basically how the um, engine has been uh, has been working. Okay, you will see the distance traveled, idle fuel use, so you know exactly how much time is spent in idle. You will know exactly uh, if it's um, it's been an effective driver or not. So you will have all these options here. It will be either total or partial data. Okay. And finally, we have the data recorder. The data recorder is an option. The, it's an option, okay? If you are doing a road test and you want to record, let's say, up to 30 minutes of the road test to make sure that uh, you can check all the values afterwards, you can do it through here. It's pretty simple to 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 check, just have to check the specific um, data you want to check to to see, and then you can just um, just start recording, and the system will automatically uh, automatically recording for 30 minutes. Okay, so again, uh, pretty simple. Then you can later um, see exactly what was going on during the the road test, and it will be pretty pretty useful again. For, for you guys if you want to check exactly how the truck is behaving on the road, okay? You see here it looks like uh, the live data. Basically, it's just selecting the specific systems you want, and then it will start recording, okay? Again, this is what we have for the um, diagnosis part, okay? Um, you will see the, the same options. There will be more options or less options depending on the system, but you will be able to, um, with what we've told you basically, uh, see the exact same thing. Now, if we want to disconnect, I want to show you the manual uh, option, the manual selection. Again, if at any point you know exactly which track you are working on, uh, you will be able to just select it here you can check here also our coverage, okay? You can either uh, enter the VIN here, and once you've entered it, the system will automatically tell you which model it is and then direct you to it, or you can just select it manually, okay? And here, this, this option is really good because you can see exactly what, what brands we cover for either truck, trailer, bus, so you see exactly what we can do for any kind of vehicle. And again, we have the exact same thing for off-highway and agricultural. You see here on off-highway, we have three different vehicles for off-highway. And let's say we want to connect to a cat. 
as I said, for CAD engines, for example, we have for CAD, uh, the automatic system scan for CAD. Okay, so you see that the system is gonna do the, is gonna work the exact same way. The exact same way um, it was working with the buttons here on the on the on the initial page. And for agricultural, the exact same thing. Okay, and then we have the manufacturer's menu. Okay, if you want to connect to a specific system instead of having to go through the full track, you can do it through here. Okay, if you know you want to connect to a Cummins engine. Just by selecting the specific, let's say the specific system. Let's say you want to connect to, to the 220 um, CM2200. You can just click here on connect. Or if you have, this is pretty important, and we'll do a webinar um, on the on this specific thing. Is if you have a, already a full code. I imagine the, the the truck is on the road, there's a fault code, and you want to go service it, and you don't know exactly what's wrong with it, you can always enter here the fault code under manual diagnosis, and you will be able to, just by introducing here the fault code, so you can use an example here, one for one, you will know exactly the component that's related, so you know exactly what's wrong with it, and you will have the troubleshooting guide, okay? Again, we'll we'll discuss this further on the um, on the on a on a, um, a future webinar. But again, it's pretty it's pretty useful to know this. Now, last thing I want to show you guys, um, it's going to be the GRP module. The GRP is the Garage Research Planning uh, module. Okay, basically this will. This will allow you, first of all, to have a customer list and a vehicle list, so you can keep track of, of exactly the works you've done to either the customers or the or the vehicle. Okay, we have the uh, diagnosis reports and the maintenance reports. Okay, in this case, pretty useful. Uh, you will know exactly what we've, um, for example, what we've seen before on on, a, on the on the um, on the simulation truck, you will see um, everything that we've done, how it's uh, established on the diagnosis report. Again, since I'm on the enterprise um, option here, which is linked to several different units, it, it, it might take some time to access the, um, the cloud. There we go. And then, for example, in this case, uh, this is the one I say just before the the training session. You will see exactly what we've done with the truck, okay? Exactly uh, systems uh, that are present, uh, the fault codes that are active. Uh, you can go code by code and all that. So again, um, you can do this in under a minute and you will have an option of showing exactly the client what's wrong and exactly what you did to the truck, okay? So if the client thinks that you didn't work on the truck or they are telling you that you didn't do anything to the truck, you can tell them exactly what you did. Again, if you have a maintenance report or a work order report, you have all the options here on the top, okay? Under workshop management, if you have a work order or you have a task, um, you can check here. Um, it's pretty useful, okay? Again, this is a way of managing the, the company, of managing the, the workshop, and um, and making sure that there's no missing step or there's no action that goes undone, okay? The options um, of uh, how to work with the, with the GRP module is here, okay? If you have just one unit, normally you will use the GRP Synchro, which is the, the version of, of for a workshop. If you have several units or several locations, you might want to uh, activate the GRP Enterprise, okay? In this case, that's the one I have. And basically, this is more more, more or less this, it, this is it. I'm not sure if you guys have anything specific you want to check 
or if there's something I you think I missed, or there's something you want to 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 see in depth. Let me see GR reactivation. Okay, give me one second. Okay, for the technical questions like, like the EGR reactivation, um, I would suggest sending a gel test feedback or sending a, a an email to the um, to the email address. I'm gonna send you right now. Training. Okay, because depend, depending on the system, it might vary. Okay, so yeah, so it's gonna be. Best if if it's something there you go if it's something related to the to the to the explanation on the, or the basic function functionalities of the software um, but again if you want to okay they're asking how to perform a turbo turbo actuator um, calibration in this case as we've seen here. Um, Question from Mike. Um, the calibration for the two right actuator should be under um, calibration. Okay, if we go here, something I missed the uh, same before is if you don't know exactly where the, 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 the specific action is, you can always click here. And for example, if you want to say VTT to check the app, you can either do the assess for the turbo actuator or calibrate it. Okay, should be here the turbocharger. And then you have the initial installation and the calibration. Okay, these are the options here. And again, if you follow the steps, you should be able to 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 do it. Okay. Um, let me show you. Well, you were asking about the EGR activation before. Give me one second. Let me see if I can find it. it should be under. Should be through here. Again, for some engines, something that we haven't seen before, uh, since we haven't um, selected any manual activation, is some engines will require different cables. Okay, um, just so you know, if we but yeah, we'll give you all the options, and then you can check exactly what we want. In this here, in this case, for the EGR for the Power MX engine, we have the um, the EGR power reduction. Okay, um, not sure if this is what you're looking for. If it's uh, you say you wanted to deactivate it, maybe there's a, a different option. But again, um, I would have to, I would have to check because I, I actually don't know everything uh, on the top of my mind of my mind. But give me one second, let me try a different engine maybe. So again, as I said, depending on the engine, um, you will have different options, okay? Let's see here. In this case, we have the reset of the adaptation values and the 
EGR and turbocharger condition test, which is basically actuation, activate and deactivate the EGR, okay? So again, as I said, um, depending on the engine, depending on the system, uh, we'll have several options. So something you've seen on a Cummins ISX might not be available on the, might not be available on the, on the, on a Packard engine. Okay, I'm seeing here. Okay, Greg, if you want, yeah, send an email. If you want, Greg, uh, we'll have to. I'll have to check with engineers. Okay. Again, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna check all the all the information, and of course, we'll give you a reply as soon as possible. Okay. So I'm not sure, guys. We have uh, five more minutes, maybe ten more minutes. If you have any other questions specifically about the software, uh, more or less of what we've seen. Yeah, our email is gonna be. It's going to be this one, training at deltest.com, okay? Okay, uh, selecting the engine manually should not give you any more options, okay? If we've detected the engine automatically, you should see the same options as if we select it manually. The thing is that uh, in order to be faster, uh, mostly on the presentation, it's easier for me to just select the, the engine manually than by going through the full scan process, okay? But again, um, no, there should be no difference in the amount of information you get if you select manually the engine that if you go to the, through the automatic system scan, okay? Okay, guys, give me one second. I'm gonna show you. Uh, I think I have the EGR option here, but give me one second. Okay, I, I believe this is the option you were looking for. Again, as I said, depending on the engine, we'll have more options or less options, or less options okay? This one here, you said 10 hours here, activated, casting. Um, so again, this we have the option of uh, disabling the EGR uh, reduction. But we are still developing on some models uh, the full options, okay? Uh, on the other one, on the EPA 10, uh, we're still on, under development. For the EPA 13, we have it, okay? So again, um, but if you think something's missing, if you think something is, um, or you, you want to add something for the next version, the best option here is always to send the JALTA feedback. That way we will be able to, uh, we will be able to, to add it for the next versions, okay? Because if we, if we don't know there's a problem, then we will not be able to fix it. No. 
Um, you were talking about horsepower. Give me one second. Let's see, coming to ISX. Uh, the same one we were on the presentation. Yeah, normally, let's see. Normally, you see it here under um, the parameters. Um, one second, because the horsepower is something that sometimes we cannot change. Okay, it, again, always depending on the engine. Um, I don't think this is one of the cases. Okay, but again, I will I will double check with engineers because again, all the technical information. Um, in order to better answer, it's going to be the engineers who, who can do it. Uh, I, will, I will double check. Randy, don't worry. I will, I will double check with engineers and I will let you know, okay? Again, if you could send a, a, an email to the training at jaltest.com so I can keep track of all the, all the questions, uh, that'd be great, okay? Because that way I will have uh, the ones I can reply myself, I will do immediately. The ones that require some information about the well from the engineers i will be able to provide that information as well okay the training it will be uh will be sent to uh to everyone sorry i was going too fast but there's a there was a lot of content in in real time so we'll try to make a another version another future session uh hopefully it will last a bit longer and we'll be able to 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 provide all the information okay I, I'm, Mike, I don't think it's here. Okay, it's basically to change the uh, oh the tire size. If it's a tire size, yeah, it's here. Um, but again, uh, you see here. Again, all this, this presentation will be this the the video will be will be sent to you guys. Okay, and again, if you have any other question or. Um, or doubt or suggestion, I will be happy to receive all kind of feedback so we can improve for future versions of the training sessions as well as improve the software. Okay, guys? Um, this is all the time we have. Um, training rep, usually it's uh, from us. It's pretty it's pretty difficult for us to go to every everywhere. everywhere. So normally you have to contact your distributors. Uh, they should be able, some of them will have training reps. If not, we can either do a remote session or or, or do a training like this one, okay, with all, with all of you guys. So, yeah. Okay, so this is it. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, again, uh, sorry if, there were, if I was talking a bit fast. Um, we'll send you all the information to your accounts. To your your email addresses, so you can you can double check it. And if there's any any question, again, send a, a, an email to the training at .com and we'll be happy to reply to any any question. Okay, guys. Oh, one last thing, uh, there was a, a question, one of the first ones, where about the tractor? Uh, let me show you. In order to connect to the tractors, you can go through here. Okay, these are all the options here. And then if you select, let's say John Deere, uh, you'll see the options that we have. I'm not sure if there was a specific question about, uh, if there was something specific about the tractor. So there's been so many questions that I've missed some of them for sure.
Yes, we will be doing one specific for agricultural. Um, not sure exactly at what point in the year, but we'll be doing one for agricultural and one for Ohio as well. Yeah, we have that in plan, on that plan. Okay, guys, have a great day, okay?